Hey, it's the coach and we're live. Hey, we got a lot of color. I love this new, um, this new um, iPad I have. Uh, just comes through great. And I'm, I'm excited to be here today and I'm excited to uh, be with you so we can talk about failure to hit the bullseye is never the fault of the target. Now, what the heck are we talking about? Well, it's a great piece of advice from a fellow by the name of Paul Jeffries, and I think about it, the target is simply that inanimate object. Whether it's a target you're shooting arrows at, a target you're shooting with the with the gun at, or whether it's a sales target or a growth target. Think about targets in your life. You're trying to hit them. You're trying to hit the bullseye, right? And when you hit the bullseye, bam, you are rocking and rolling. Get that raise, close that customer, get approval and move forward. And if you don't succeed, who's got to take the blame? You do. That's just the plain and simple how it happens. Mr. Jeffries added, failure to buy is never the fault of the prospect. So stop blaming on them and start doing what needs to be done to make it happen. That's what we're going to tell you today. Um, I, we spend a great deal of time trying to get people to believe it's anyone's fault but our own, don't we? I mean, it's just human nature. So today, between this week and next week, I want to run you through 10 things that you can do um, to make it happen better for you. Let's see. Am I still good here? I think I am. <laughs> okay. I thought I had a problem there for a minute. But anyway, we're going to do five today. We're going to do five next week. So uh, I hope you're as excited as I am. Uh, I'm Coach Manny. I help business owners to double their sales um, by making them to build a process that helps them to excel strategically, tactically, and we execute. And so if you are in the process of trying to say, how do I get more business? Then we should talk. And that's what I do. We have a process called 90 Days to Success that we're selling now. If you haven't seen it yet, I encourage you to go out to coachmanny.com, take a look at the 90 days to success process, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the program. If you need business, if you're struggling with generating sales, as I know many of you out there are, if your sales team is weak, or they're not coming through the way you want them to, or perhaps you just, this is the first time I had to hire a salesperson, or perhaps you're trying to figure out how can I sell better, because I'm a solopreneur. Any of those situations, get a hold of us. That's what I do, and that's what I've been doing for a lot of years. Bring in technology as well, of course, because uh, those that don't know, you know, I am a programmer by training, and I still like to dabble a little bit with that stuff. The question to you today as we start, do you believe that failure to hit the bullseye is never the target's fault? That's the question we have for you today. I'm getting a little feedback on the video here. Let's see if we can get rid of those dots. I don't know where they come from. Um, uh, I see some people out there. I, I love the waves. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Betty. Uh, let's see. Can I wave back at you? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I just wave a little bit to some of you out there. and uh, It's great to have you on the program, all of you out there today. And so let me just recap for all those who came in since I did it at the beginning. Uh, you know, we probably talked too much, but failures to hit the bullseye is never the fault of the target. That's what we're talking about today. Um, you need to get that raise. You need to make things happen. Guess who's going to make it happen? You are. And the only one that's going to make it happen is you. So today, I want to run you through five of these processes. We'll show you how to make that those five work for you. 
And then next week, we'll come back. We'll give you five more. And hopefully, you'll be rocking and rolling. Let me see what I did with my hot drink here. You know, just a tip for those of you who are doing some of this video. And you know, I always encourage you to do live. I hope we can keep our connection and do well today. Drinking something hot keeps that voice rolling. So that's just a tip for you. So even if you're out speaking, whatever, have a cup of coffee, cup of tea, something hot. Cold kills your voice. And so let's go to the first key today. Number one. And the question is, when you're in a sales situation, all right, are you listening? Wow. That's the first thing. Are you listening? Are you hearing what's being said? Now, there's such a thing as listening and there's a, such a thing as hearing, right? And they're not necessarily the same. Uh, and sometimes I question people is, do you hear at all when you're in that sales call? Or are you so pumped up, hyped up, rocking and ready to go that all you want to do is present, you know? I can tell you I used to have to kick my salespeople in the, uh, under the table and say, stop, because sometimes they'd be so excited, all they want to do is keep selling, keep selling, and the customer's already bought, and the deal's ready to be closed, and they're still selling. Stop. Listen to what's going on. If you take some time and you listen to what's really going on with your customer, you're going to be amazed. And I'm still getting those lights. Hold on one second. I'm going to try to do one thing here. Maybe this will kill it. Let's see. I'm not still getting that bad reflection there. I'm sorry. Let's cut this light and see if that gets it. All right. That killed that. Now let's turn this light back on and see if you can see me okay. Hey! I think we're better now. <laughs> it might be a little darker than I like to be. Let's see what happens when we turn that one on. There we go. Now we might have enough light. But we don't have those silly looking things around the eyes. And those of you who are on audio, I know you have no idea what we're talking about. But are you listening? It is so critical. And I always tell people the greatest skill you can have, the way you become that superstar, is you learn to listen to what's going on. And so, Point number two is, were you listening the last time the prospect said something? Could you in your mind remember what they said? You see, here's what happens. We're in a sales call, right? And we're doing the sales call and we're excited. And all of a sudden, the c customer says something and we have been taken now off of the process and now we've moved completely to trying to figure out the answer to his or her question. And that's why you see me when, I, when I'm selling, one thing I'll always have, let's see, yeah, is I'll always have my little book with me. You know, if you know me at all, you know I'm always carrying one of these composition books, right? And I'll be sitting here and I will write the note so I remember what he, he or she said, and then I can get back to it. But meanwhile, I need to listen, because what happens when I'm formulating an idea in my head, guess what happened? Everything that's going on is out the window, and I may miss critical points of the conversation. I'm sitting here, I'm trying to find an answer. I may be trying to, what's the strategy? Oh, I see he's going or she's going off in this area. What do I have to do now to bring this deal in? Let me think about that. And meanwhile, they are giving me hint, tip, help, and I missed it all. Don't get so I just, I just need to get in. I, I just can't wait. I need to. And, I, and I'm going to tell you, that's what happens so many times. And I know some of you out there, especially those of you who have kind of gotten over that, you're laughing and you say, yeah, that's what I used to do too. But well, I can tell you, I did too. Uh, 
I just can't wait till this this customer is quiet so I can get in there and I can start talking because you know I need to get my point out there. What I'm saying is carry something that you can write with. Write down. I know some of you use your phone, but sometimes the problem with the phone is, or even a a, a tablet, a lot of times is the customer gets distracted and thinks you're looking at something that has nothing to do with the deal. But if you write, it just it just works a little better. You know, that's there's some things that just work better in the sales situation. So I throw that out there for you. Um, wow. Let's keep going. Number three. Now, you, the other side of the spectrum is, you know, that side of the spectrum we were on and we were talking about make sure, right, that you're listening. Now, the other spe part of the spectrum is make sure that you close the deal. So many people don't do it. Did you ask for the order? Whenever anybody... Uh, comes back when I was running a sales team. The first question I always ask is, did you ask for the order? I don't mean did you dance around it and come up with all kinds of other answers. I don't mean did you play with it. I mean, did you ask for the order? Because so many times, that's what happens. Salespeople do not ask for the order. And that's what you, if you're, if you're the entrepreneur, if you're the sales manager, you need to really emphasize to your team, ask for the order. Ask, ask for the order. Say, are you ready to buy today? I mean, that's a simple question, right? I mean, how can you not, are you ready to buy today? Uh, and then there's, of course, the classic, you know, and, and go read Zig's closes because they are still the classics and the best thing out there is Zig Ziglar's closes. And if you don't know who Zig Ziglar is, go out there and uh, check his stuff out because he is one of my great mentors and probably the father of selling. Uh, or you can say, are you going to buy today or aren't you? I mean, sometimes, depending on the relationship, of course, and depending on how you feel with the customer, but are you going to buy or aren't you going to buy? I mean, it comes down to be that simple at times because the most frustrating thing is you come back from this sales call, you're all pumped up, the guy's interested, the girl wants to buy, she, she loved it, it's good. And, and where did you leave it? Did you ask for the order? Ah. Yeah, I don't think they were ready. You always ask. Even when they're not ready, I always ask for the order. That's just that's just what I teach people as well. So, let me take a break here and let's let's talk about one thing. Or what if you could just what if you could get some help on getting some things done? faster, more effectively, more consistently, with greater results. Is that something? Now I'm going to ask for the order, right? Is that something that would turn you on? And is that something that you're interested in? If you could cut your procrastination time, if you could get more results, is that something you're interested in? Well, we have this new process, which some of you probably saw, called 90 Days to Success. How to get more done in less time. And the question is, simply, are you in? 90 days to success. It's an amazing stuff. Let's see if I can do this. No, I can't do it there. 90 days to success. And it's really, if you go out and you just type in 90 days to, T-O, your success you'll find this tool and you'll be amazed. Successful people get more done before noon than the rest of the world gets done all day. So if that's where you want to be, let me just tell you, I'm asking you for the order, right? If you're listening to this, 90 days to success could be that key that opens that great door for you. But let's get back to teaching. 
because really that's what I love to do more than anything. All right, number four. When you didn't get the clothes, when you asked the question and you couldn't get them to say yes, did you stop there? Or did you continue to try to close? I mean, all through the process, one of the things Ziegler tells us is all through the process, you should be trying to close with some soft closes. Is this something you like? Uh, how do you, would, it, would you buy this? Would you take delivery this week or next week? You know, the classic type close questions. But don't stop asking. I, I asked you, you know, and I, let's, let's do the example. I just said, are you interested in buying 90 Days to Success? And I might be sitting right across from you and you might say, I don't think so, Manny. And then I'd say, okay, I'll see you later. No. Then I'd go in and explain something else that maybe if I was listening, I'll, I'll go back to one of your points that you were struggling with. And I'll say, well, let me say, I hear you. But remember you told me that last week you felt your staff was just spending so much time on stuff that wasn't relevant, if they had a process like 90 days to success, they would have a list. These are the relative things for today. So I would just, you see how I reapproach the sales process? That's what I would like you to think about. Try a different way to close. Now, let me get that nasty word out here called practice. How much did you practice? How many times did you get in front of the mirror? Did you do a video? Did you do an audio? Did you practice the close? I don't ever, like what I just shared with you, I practice that. I practice it again and I keep practicing it again. I keep trying to get more and more and more effective as you should be. I need to be so quick. I need to be able to talk the product. I need to be able to make it feel like to the customer, like I know exactly, I've got this whole thing under control. I feel that we can really help you. And that excitement, of course, in you is, is just critical, isn't it? Of course it is, of course it is. Let's keep going, number five. Are you comfortable getting a no? Now, this is, this is if I was sitting here with you and you said no, I could, you can watch somebody's face and you can tell, is that really a no? Or is it, maybe maybe they're not really saying no, right? Watch what happens when someone says no. And you can tell whether they just plain and simple don't have any interest in getting no. Now, on the other side, they can watch your face and if and you know some of us especially those of you selling the larger corporations you're dealing you know if you're dealing with companies like Walmart and those guys they got professional buyers and these people are trained that watch the face the first time I say no or say that's too high and they too can tell exactly where you're at as the salesperson don't dance around. If you get a no, I don't have any expression. Work on that. Because when when somebody sees the heartbreak, when somebody sees the disappointment, when somebody sees the and you lose your position and you you they can tell that. So just let it float over you and keep right on they never really ask. Now, however, I want to caution you. This is, and we'll kind of fit, uh, close up on this one is, it's better to walk out with a no than without an answer. So again, I go back to the example when I asked my salespeople, did you get the deal? And they said, no. I said, okay. But if they didn't ask, now what happens? I got to go back again. I got to go through the 
process again. I got to call them. I got to try to get a hold of them. Look, I know some of you people deal with stuff that's on a long-term cycle, but what you're trying to do is you're trying to get to a no, but only in the framework of how you sell your product. If no right now means they'll come back in a few months, okay. If no right now means you got to reconnect with them next year, okay. But either you, you got to get an answer into this stage of the sales process. So, did you close the deal or not? If not, then you better work these five. And you better get ready for the next five, which we're going to have next week. Failure creates success. I wrote the book. I think we got one around here. Let's see. Yep, right here. I thought I put it out. This is a great little book. Also help you with selling. Uh, available out on Amazon called Failure Creates Success. I'm wondering if you're reading that backwards. I hope not. Anyhow, Failure Creates Success. Sales comes from working hard, working smart from trying and trying and trying again. If you're doing the right things the right way, the question is, are you closing the deal? If not, then do you need some help? Remember what Paul Jeffrey said, failure to hit the bullseye is never the result of the target. The target can't improve, but you can. So, you need some help? connect with us. That's what we do. We help you. Now, what if you could increase your sales? What if you could make more money per year? Is that something that you're interested in? I'm also overwhelmed with the tools and processes, consultants, <coughs> everything out there. I know you are overwhelmed that as a professional out there, you're probably getting bombarded with everything and anything. But I want to encourage you once again, look at 90 days to your success and see what you find out there. That's what we do. And we do it better than anybody else. Wow. This may be coming across a little different because I decided today to try to see how the video falls on the new uh, iPad. So I apologize if it's not coming across as well as we'd hope. But I think you probably got some great information today. I hope you did anyway. Um, 90 days to your success. We'll throw it out on the post for you. Uh, we're here every Friday at 10.30 with a lesson. Now I'm going right into my 11 o'clock, and the 11 o'clock is the closed group, the Entrepreneur Toolbox. If you want to get in there, because we're starting to work on masterminding now and those type of things, please uh, get in. If not, well, we're here every week at 10.30, and I try to put a piece out, if it's only for a couple minutes, every day, so hopefully you're getting them. Hey, it's Coach Manny saying, that target isn't moving, right? That target is still right there where it started, isn't it? And so, failure to hit the bullseye is never the result of the target. Thanks for being here today. Get out there and let's close some business this week, right? All right.